Curvy legs can be a fun little feature on small tables and chairs, but they look difficult and wasteful of materials. Well, I'm here to tell you that they don't have to be difficult or wasteful. Take a look here. This leg would normally require an extra large blank from which to cut the curved shape, and there would be a lot of waste. But it was actually cut from this significantly narrower blank with virtually no waste at all through a cool lamination process. That's right, no bending, just a bandsaw and some glue. Start with a leg blank that's equal in thickness and width. You might just glue a couple 2x4s together and try that out. Mill it down so the corners are all nice and crisp. Now, draw your shape. In most cases, you'll want a straight top to connect to an apron, but after that, it's entirely up to you. You can make any combination of curves you like. Just keep in mind that you must remain within the confines of the blank. This means staying away from the edges and the corners a little bit. All the rough shaping is done with a bandsaw equipped with a blade narrow enough to make the curves that you want to cut. Mine is a quarter inch wide. I like to use a fence to cut the straight portion at the top, but the rest of the shape is cut freehand. Try to make your cut smoothly. If you drift away from your line, don't make a sharp correction. Just alter the shape a little bit so you can keep your curves gradual. When you're finished, Trace the shape you ended up with on a piece of paper or cardboard to make a template. Now reassemble the two halves of the blank and use some tape to hold them together. Note how my template lines up with the original cut that I just made. Keep that orientation of the template, but roll the blank 90 degrees to the right and trace the template again on that face. Again, try to cut smooth curves. Drifting away a little bit is better than making sharp corrections because we're going to essentially turn the blank inside out. So a rough saw curve will mean a rough outer surface and a lot more sanding. When you finish the second cut, remove the tape and separate the leg into its two halves, each with two pieces. Reverse the two pieces in each half, then sandwich them together and you have your leg. I recommend numbering the tops so you can keep track of the orientation as you glue them back together. These can be a bit of a puzzle. It's easiest to glue the leg up one half at a time. It can be difficult to keep them aligned as you apply clamping pressure, so I shot a couple of headless pin nails to reduce slippage. You don't want a bunch of pins because you'll be sanding and using a rasp to refine the shape later. After about an hour or so, you can put your two halves together to complete the leg. While these dry, let me show you something else that's interesting. Remember how I used a template to be sure the two cuts produced identical curves? Well, you don't technically have to do that. You can cut two different freeforms and just see what happens. For example, on this scrap of wood, you can see the first curve I cut was hollow hump hollow, but the second was hump hollow hump, pretty much the opposite shape. Notice the result compared to these other two legs, which were made using a template so both cuts were identical. They feature different shapes between the two legs. One has a foot that angles inward and the other has a foot that angles outward. But note how both of them curve on a single plane, which can be seen from the side, but not so much from the front. The blank made with two mismatched opposite shape cuts curves along two planes, which you can see from all directions. With experimentation, you can come up with your own unique designs. And don't forget, you can experiment with little pieces of scrap in miniature. These are just pieces of 2x2 two two stock that I normally would just throw away, but they help me to wrap my head around this process and all of the possibilities. Once the leg is dry, you can even further refine the shape with sandpaper or rasps. It's a surprisingly easy process. Give it a try on one of your next projects. See you next time. As the builders behind some of the top brands in the industry, Harvey Machinery has for decades been letting others take credit for their innovation. Now they've developed their own line of saws with the quality and features once reserved only for professional shops. The woodworking world is officially on notice. Harvey Machinery will be in the shadows no longer. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.